Good morning. Good morning, y'all. We made it to the last Sunday of 2023. Come on. That's something to celebrate. I woke up this morning, didn't know if I was going to wake up, but we're here. And we're so glad that you've joined us at Solid Rock this morning. I invite you to stand as we begin in worship this morning together. Thank 
teach my song. Yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I can't think of that being one of the closing songs we're going to sing as a church family here in 2023, huh? I don't know about you, but my heart is filled with gratitude because of what he's done for me and for what he does for me on a daily basis, and I hope you are as well. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to be here this morning. We thank you so much that uh, these past 365 days, uh, each one a new chapter in a book that we began last January 1 has now been completed almost, and we ask, Lord, that you would help us as we enter 2024 we would begin a fresh, new, right in your will. And Father, may it begin with a heart of gratitude because of what you've done for us and what you continue to do for us on a daily basis. In your name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We know there's many places you could have been today, uh, whether that's still in bed getting ready for the, the big night tonight, because some of you are going to watch that proverbial ball drop 1159. Others of you, uh, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock maybe. Uh, you might make it too, but it's going to be a great night. We hope you have a great time celebrating with friends and family tonight. But thanks for being here this morning. We have a lot of new guests here today, and it's such an honor for, you to, for us to have you here today. In your seat back pockets, there's an information card. We would love you to take time to fill that out for us and drop it in one of the freestanding boxes. Or you can go simply right to our church app and fill it out as well. Or hit one of the QR codes on the back of some of the chairs, and you can complete it there as well. We would just love to acknowledge you here today and say thank you. Also, get you some information about our church. Uh, but thank you for being here today. Thanks for choosing to be here today with us. Also, that is a way for you to let us know about prayer needs in your life. Uh, represented in our church family today, uh, whether it was the first service or this one, uh, we have people that are from our church family who are laying in a hospital bed viewing this service this morning. We have people who, uh, who completed a chemo treatment earlier this week that are home right now watching. Uh, there are people here who are hurting, uh, suffering job loss, making decisions about the, their family. And we want to be able to pray for you as a church. And so you can use that same information card to let us know about those needs in your life. Again, drop those in the two freestanding boxes in back. Also go to our, our app as well and you can complete that information. We want to pray for you as a church family right now and especially as we enter 2024. If you came prepared to give today, that's the same way you give. You can drop those envelopes uh, in those boxes in back, or you can see on the screen other ways to give electronically. Thanks for your faithfulness to give to Solid Rock over the course of this year so we can impact this community also all around the world and make an impact for the cause of Christ. After the service today, we're going to just take down all these beautiful decorations, and we're going to need some help just getting some bins out uh, behind the screen. So if you can stick around just for a couple minutes and help us, we'll just form an assembly line here and get those boxes down quickly. We'd appreciate any help you can offer us. Well, today uh, we're going to kind of begin a, a kind of a three-part series, so to speak. Today is a standalone talk, and then next week we're going to begin a brand new series called Counting on God. It's going to be called talk 3D Trust, Heart, Soul, and Strength. And we're going to be talking about stewardship, finances, money, all those things in life that are so important to us, but also the, from the perspective of God. We hope you'll join us. And then after that, we're going to be talking about discipleship. That's going to take us right up to Palm Sunday. But today, we're going to start in the same thing about counting, and we have the privilege to hear from our discipleship and teaching pastor, Pastor Kevin Meek. Good morning. 
So it's New Year's Eve. I love New Year's Eve. 12, 31, 23. And as someone on our staff uh, noticed a while back, there's something cool about today's date. You probably already know what it is, and you probably gathered from the bumper. It counts. It counts, right? You got 12, 31, 23. You take away the slashes, and you get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, Three, counting twice, kind of cool. I'm a numbers geek, so this stuff actually gets me excited. It's kind of strange. <laughs> but today counts. But on the precipice of a new year, 2024, uh, why not, in a far more important and different way, make every day count. You with me? So today, based on today's scripture, uh, if, if, if you, if we want to make our days count, we need to count our days. Open to Psalm 90. Based on this uh, psalm, today's big idea, kind of trying to state it in sort of application form, is that in light of the brevity and the realities of our days, combined with God's provision for our days, here's the thing. Your days are numbered, so number your days. Your days are numbered, so number your days. And the core of this comes from a, kind of our capstone verse this morning, which is Psalm 90, verse 12. And it says this, it says, So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. So I want to unpack this idea through four movements within Psalm 90. And the first is this. There's the context for numbering our days. And that's, again, the brevity, the realities of them. Um, this really comes out of the first word in verse 12. If we can get that on the slide again, it begins with the word so. So we have to ask ourselves, why so? Now, a little bit of historical context on this. Moses wrote this psalm. And so the historical context is that this would be, uh, the, the, the context would probably be the wilderness wandering of the Jews with all the wondrous ups and disobedient and even sometimes fatal downs of that time. And so, he, so verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 90 tell us this. It says, a, a, a prayer of Moses, the man of God, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Isn't that incredible? Let's take this in for a moment. First of all, the Lord is our dwelling place. I mean, how awesome is that? The Lord is our dwelling place is one of the greatest ideas that you and I could hold in our heads going into a new year. In other words, he is your home. He is your refuge for every single one of those numbered days. And we could dwell on that and stuff like that, but notice also verse 2. God is described also in this way. This is mind-blowing. From everlasting to everlasting. Right? That's who he is, even before creation. It's absolutely mind-boggling. Here's a being that just goes beyond time in each direction. It's absolutely incredible. So he's obviously eternal, but I would agree with those who would say that this implies he's unchanging. We know that's a scriptural truth, right? He's unchanging. This means that as you and I, as we count our days, we can count on him. He's not going to change. He is always faithful and never not. But notice also in light of these verses, we are different from him. Now, there's many ways we're different from God, but notice specifically, he is not only changeless, but he is timeless. In other words, he's not bounded by time. His days are without number, but our days are numbered. Keep that in mind for what's coming in a little bit. But notice also verses 3 and 4. It says, You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past or as a watch in the night. So he puts an end to our earthly days. 
we don't know when our day is going to happen. But He does. In other words, He is sovereign over our days. And so they're therefore numbered and they're very brief in view of verse 4. In fact, they use that term, a watch. A watch that, according to scholars, is about three or four hours. Even a thousand years is to God the equivalent of that. It's like a, it's like a blip. Even if you could live a thousand years, it's just a brief blip to God. It's still brief in general. Yeah, of course, we don't live nearly that long. In fact, verses uh, 5 through 8 go on to say, it says, You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. The grass, it's like grass that's here today, gone tomorrow. That's our life, this side of the grave. Of course, we're eternal beings. We have eternity, but we're talking about our earthly years here. And this is like a dream. I don't know about you, but I don't tend to remember my dreams. Right? They're there, and they're gone. It's kind of weird, because I had a dream last night, and I happen to remember it, which is a little odd for me. But, but our life is like a dream. It just goes away. And now, I don't want to be a... You may say, man, you're like a Debbie Downer today. No, no, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. What this is, is so that we would do more with our days, so that you and I would be wise with the days that we have. That's where this is leading. Because notice also, verses uh, uh, 7 and 8, it says, For uh, we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Very uh, sobering words, and I agree with Spurgeon about this, that remember, the context is the wilderness wanderings, okay, of the Jews. And so they describe the life of those who disobeyed, died in the wilderness. But I also think they describe in general kind of the human condition. Uh, And praise God, if you're in Christ, the good news of the gospel, praise God that Jesus, if you know him, is the answer to the realities of sin and God's wrath for us. Hallelujah. And it continues, verses 9 through 11, this theme of brevity of our days. By the way, notice how often the word days weaves its way through the whole of Psalm 90. Kind of track that as we go. It says, for all our days... Pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? It's very interesting to notice that, 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 that lifespans, even back then, very similar to what we have now, right? 70, 80 years. Some people less, some people more, but that's kind of where it is. And so if a thousand years are brief, how much more brief are 70 or 80? I'm reminded of another verse in Scripture that has always made an impression on me. It's very sobering, but we need to know it. It's in James 4, beginning in verse 13, it says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. For whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. So verse 14, it refers to our life and it compares it to a mist. Uh, I was once at a Christian camp, and uh, someone, I think they were speaking on that particular verse, used a kind of an object example. It made an impression on me, so I'm going to do the same. Spray bottle, right? So here's the mist. As quick as it comes, it's gone, right? Sometimes it's good for us to see the truth, not just to hear it. For some of us, it's actually good to feel the truth. So. <laughs> At least they're not splitting watermelons up here, right? By the way, it has a squirt gun setting on it, so. But a, a mist. I mean, it's, it's here, now it's, it's gone. So that's our life. 
So our days are indeed numbered. And so if that's the case about our days, what about us? We are what? We are dependent on God, this one who's so different from us. We're dependent on God. And so no wonder, given the weightiness, the sobriety of verses 1 through 11, he lands at verse 12 and says, So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. And so this leads us to our application of secondly, after the context of numbering our days, we have the call to number our days. Your days are numbered, so number your days. Do it. That's what we're to do. We get verse 12 on the screen there again. It calls us to something, and we're to do that. We're to number our days. But the question is how? Well, first, it might be helpful for us to, to think about what numbering our days does not mean, right, in all likelihood. It, it, it doesn't mean wasting our days, frittering them away. There's many ways we can do that, right? Um, even with some things that are not bad things in and of themselves, but if they get excessive, like excessiveness and things like what are those, video games or maybe it's social media, to the point of aimlessness, of wasting vast amounts of time, or even for some of us to the point of addiction. It certainly wouldn't mean to live life passively or purposelessly or without the gospel in mind or selfishly or unwisely. What does it mean? I believe it means to make the most of them, to make the most of our days, to make them count for God's glory, for the sake of Jesus being all about him. And I would submit to you, Scripture gives us a number of ways that we can avoid, or I'm sorry, a number of ways that we can make the most of our numbered days. Uh, and these are all in the app, by the way, so you don't have to write them all down. But, for example, living our days to the glory of God. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 tells us, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. How much? All. And it's eating and drinking. These are everyday things. So we can glorify God every day. And even in everyday things. Or how about making the most of our days by living our days on purpose for God's purposes? For Christians, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God's got work for you and I to do, and he's prepared it ahead of time. Oh, how about making the most of the opportunities of each day? Uh, Ephesians 5, 16 and 17 says, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. So our numbered days occur in the context of evil days, and each of those days pregnant with opportunity to walk wisely and in God's will. So you and I, we can ask God, ask God to help you see and seize those opportunities because he knows they're coming. Or how about this, living with the right priorities, putting first things first with each of our numbered days. Rather than living life as we often can, anxiously, Instead, rather than being anxious in light of God's provision, Jesus tells people in, in Matthew 6.33, he tells us, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That is the priority of each numbered day, his kingdom, his righteousness. God will take care of the rest. Also, living mindful of the end, including eternity. Laying up treasure in heaven. How huge is that? Jeff Bezos, people like Jeff Bezos, Tom Brady, people like that, they're, they're very rich people, right? Monetarily. Compared to you or me. <laughs> Not in days. They may have more or less days than you or I, but all of us have a finite number of days, and we have the same 24 hours in each one. Not one of us has one second more or less. And so in view of that, let's spend them wisely. On what? 
Things that last. Things that matter. Guess what? People matter, don't they? People last. We're all immortal beings. So things like sharing the gospel, discipling your children or grandchildren, giving generously to God of our time and our talent and our treasure for His purposes. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6.20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Uh, Pastor Brad and I were at a conference in Chicago, Moody Founders Week. There was a guy named Dr. David Sutton. He was speaking, he was preaching. He was talking about a man, another pastor had made a, a real huge impact in his life, a guy named uh, Reverend Dr. Willie B. Jemison. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know a ton about that man other than he was a pastor, but what struck me was the timeline of his life. If we can, we've kind of, we've kind of reproduced the slide here. I was struck by, it said, born into life, October 13th, 1929. And then, as usual with obituaries and stuff like that, the slide has had born into eternity, June 5th, 2011, which I thought was great. Reminds us to live with eternity in mind. We're born on earth, born into eternity. What hit me the most was overlaid on that dash, the usual dash, was the word served. Served. I love that because it, 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 he spent his days wisely by serving the Lord and others, which is a great way to make the most of our days. And the beauty is you don't have to be a pastor like him to do it. For all of us, there's a birth date, and then, of course, on the epitaph, there's that inevitable death date. Right? But as someone I once know, uh, or I know once said, Uh, We are now living in the dash. Your days are lived in the dash. How do you want your dash remembered? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? How might your dash make an impact, perhaps even an eternal impact, in others' lives? For God's glory. In light of those questions, question for you and I to ask God, Lord, how might you want me to adjust how I spend my time in those days that make up the dash. Is there anything you want me to change? Anything you want me to remove? Anything you want me to add, Lord? And then let his wisdom pour into you. I think that's a great way we can spend our days, and there's one more I want to share here, and it might seem rather obvious, and it should be, focused on and following the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the last one. Focused on and following the Lord Jesus Christ. Because remember in verse 12, it says, in view of verse 12, numbering our days, we get a heart of wisdom. And I agree with those who would say that Jesus is indeed the very essence of wisdom. Is he not? We know this because Colossians 2 3 says about Jesus, says, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All wisdom is hidden in him. And so if we would live our days wisely, we must be in our in Christ, our days centered on him, following him. There's more that we could say, but this is some food for thought about how we can make the most of our days. But notice Psalm 990 verse 12 also shares thirdly the reason to number our days. Get a heart of wisdom, right? In view of verse 12. Um, The word get speaks of having something we may not have now. We can throw verse 12, I think. I think it might be the next. Yeah, there we go. So get speaks of something we may not have now, obviously, right? 
Well, numbering our days, what does it get us? A heart of wisdom. What does a heart of wisdom do? It's what we need to live life well and rightly, is it not? And heart is the center of who you are. In other words, it's more than you're not my, my, you're in my emotions. It's more than that. It's the seat of our motivations. It's the very wellspring of why you and I do what we do and say what we say. That's how central and important our heart is. And so numbering our days gives us a heart of wisdom. A wisdom, since it's, it's a heart of wisdom, it's therefore a, a, a wisdom that is deep set, that's innate, that's from the heart. And it comes how? Numbering our days. See, there's worldly wisdom and there's godly wisdom. And we are after godly wisdom. There's a big difference. And that's a wisdom that perhaps, among other things, is in essence living life well and rightly in accordance with God's will revealed in God's word. Charles Spurgeon once uh, wrote this. He says, what is the best way of living wisely but to live in Christ and live to God? Let me illustrate it this way. Most of us probably have money. It doesn't necessarily mean we're rich, but we, might have, we probably have money in different spots, right? There might be money that you have in your pocket or purse or wallet. There might be money that you have like in a bank account or an investment account, or at least in a piggy bank, right? Um, I usually have about a dollar <laughs> on me in my wallet, especially in this electronic age. Um, but imagine with me for a moment that you have more than a buck, okay, on your person, okay, that every dollar that you have on your person right now, whether in your wallet or your purse or your pocket, is all the money that you have, period. That's your worth. Okay? Not in any possession or account. That's Imagine what you've got on your person right now is all that you have. How much more thoughtfully then would you spend each of those dollars than you might otherwise? More wisdom, probably and hopefully, right? you would at least put a whole lot more thought into how you used each and every one of those dollars. And yet every day we have something far more valuable than dollars. How much is our days? How much more should we number our numbered days? What will help us to do this? That leads us to our second application, and it's this. Ask God to help you, to teach you. I'm not making that up. That's what the psalmist Moses is doing. All of Psalm 90 is a prayer. So, so the whole psalm is a prayer. And so think about it. It's not just what he, the content of what he's saying. It's what he's doing as he says it. In other words, it's not just what we're supposed to do. It's on whom we depend in order to do it. And so verse 12 says, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. You see that? Teach us. It's asking God to do something. So let's begin each day in prayer. Ask God to teach you to number your days. Having numbered, counted your, counted your days, we can ask him to help us to make the most out of them, to make those days count. Because our days are few. They include toil and trouble. But to help us enjoy them, and to make them count, there is a third application that's found in this last to fourth movement in the psalm, and that's God's provision for our numbered days. And that's joy from his steadfast love and grace to establish our work, because folks, we've got work to do in those days, don't we? So you might say, well, well, Kevin, what about enjoying those days that we have? Well, this, the psalm goes there, too, because notice what happens in verses uh, 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 13 to 15. It says, Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen evil. What's beautiful in this is in all your, if you're in Christ, in all your days, God never stops loving you. That's what steadfast love is. No matter what each day holds, he always loves you and never doesn't. And as we let that saturate and marinate into our hearts, we end up getting joy, 
gladness that is sufficient for any circumstance, good or bad. Joy can transcend that. And notice in view of uh, light of verse 15, the gladness compensates for the affliction. Do you see that? It's incredible. All of us will experience suffering. Some of us have and are right now. And I find it amazing that as we walk more closely with the Lord, with our days, I have probably, I've been here myself and I've heard it from other people, I've probably heard the words, God is good. More, as much or more from Christians who are suffering than from Christians for whom everything's going great. I think that's incredible. I think that's the grace of God. He goes on, he says, in the last two verses of the psalm, it says, 16 and 17, he says, let your, so you're going to see God's work and you're going to see our work. He says, let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And I would agree with those who would say that established work is what? It's enduring work, right? If you build a building, it, it lasts, right? It's here. Established work is enduring work. It goes on. It lasts. Like impacting the next generation for Christ or making an eternal impact in someone's life. Stuff that counts, in other words. And here's the beauty. Like Moses, we can call on God for his grace, for his favor, for his help, that he would establish the work of our hands. We can pray the same thing. And so I encourage us to do so. A summary of today's takeaways. One, number your days. For you and me, number your days. Secondly, ask God to help you, to teach you. Thirdly, remember God's provision for your days. Ask him for gladness from his steadfast love and for his grace to establish the work of your hands each of your and my numbered days. I want to conclude with something that is hopefully familiar to at least most of us. Remember this? Remember these babies? You probably can't see it in the back. This is a marble. Okay? And it, uh, uh, at one of our uh, student takeover services, some of my favorite services in the calendar year for the church, uh, Pastor Jack, you'll recall, he used the analogy of marbles for the limited number of days, weeks, we have with our kids right before they move out of the house, before we don't have as much influence on their lives as, as much as we had. And, and, and then the encouragement, among other things, was to be intentional, to make the most of those, to be purposeful. With those marbles, you remember, he took one out of one jar and put it in the other. One was the jar we have of days left, the other one's the ones that are spent. And every marble, when it goes to one jar to the other, it's, it's gone. We don't want to lose our marbles. We want to use them. And I believe we can apply this to all of life and to all of our relationships, can't we? Just think about this for a moment. It's true of your children, but also your coworkers, your fellow believers in the church, your parents, everybody you know, their days are numbered. And some of them may have less than we think and they think. And your days are numbered and you put them all together, that when we think of this, it's not just stewarding our parenting, but it's that. But also, let's think of it in terms of stewarding our lives. Each day like a marble. Because one day, when one marble's spent, it's gone. And one day, the marbles run out. So let's make the most of them, amen? Let's pray. Lord, we don't know the number of our days in terms of the actual arithmetic number. But we do know that they're numbered. We know that you know. And Lord, we ask, Lord, like the psalmist, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Lord, help us not only number our days, but to take each day and make the most of it to make it count, to live it wisely. We know that you can teach us. We know that wisdom comes from you. 
And so we're utterly dependent on you. And so as we stand on the precipice of a new year filled with days of its own and the years to come, Lord, help us to make the most out of each one of those days, to make them count for your glory and for the sake of Christ, for the good of others, for eternal impact. Lord, we ask these things of you in the awesome name of Jesus. Amen. I can't think of a better way to finish 2023 and enter into 2024 than with the song Nothing Else. It's one that speaks personally to me, but I think it's just a great foundation, a melody for 2024. I want nothing but to be in your presence, Lord, and to put you first and foremost in our lives. So you join with us as we stand and worship together.
all about Jesus, isn't it? And he is enough. In fact, he's more than enough. And in view of who he is, and in view of that, and the truths that we've been learning this morning, do not be afraid to number your days. And may it be to the glory of God, for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the good of others, and for your own good. Let's, you and I, resolve for 2024 and all the days that it holds to make every day count for him. Amen? Amen. Let's do it. Folks, have a wonderful and happy new year. If you can stick around and help us take down bins, we'd appreciate that. Have a great week. Happy new year.